We are lucky enough to have hedge fund managers join us, make the conversation more interesting. And today, or at least right now, we're going to be talking about the junk bond market because it had a decent start to the year, a big kick in the stomach midway through. It is now somewhat stabilizing. Hedge fund manager David Harris is right beside me here in the newsroom. We're going to find out how he is positioned at Acuity Capital. We're even going to ask him to share some of his picks. David, that was pretty brave of you to offer. So obviously, we have to take it up. We have to take you up on it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show, Deidre. So what have the trends meant to you in the high yield market? I mean, it's been a pretty volatile year in many products and high yield right. certainly has not been excluded. I mean, as I just mentioned, a pretty good strong start to the year right. and then absolutely off the charts back to like 08 levels mid year right. and now stabilizing again. What has that meant for you? Well, we have been very defensive um, for the past nine months or so. Um, I would say right now we are uh, as constructive we are, that we've been on the high yield markets in quite a while. Selectively, not all of the markets, uh, but um, uh, what we saw uh, really for the past 12 or 18 months was a complacency uh, by the investor uh, base that was caused by Fed easing. And um, uh, we thought the market was really priced for perfection and investors weren't getting paid for risk. Uh, the summer changed all that very quickly. Uh, high yield crashed. Uh, September and August were down about 12%. Uh, bringing spreads back out to levels that we think are very attractive. I think are very attractive. Why, why do you think the crash happened and are those issues resolved then permanently? I mean, at least from the people that we spoke with, it seems like a lot of liquidity had just dried up. I mean, trading slowed down. Investment banks didn't even want to make a market in this stuff, right? right? That's the result of the markets having crashed. I think um, we try to focus on companies where the fundamentals have not changed, but the, but the markets have. Um, there was uh, really a, a flight to anything with yield in the early part of the year. Uh, and the Fed was inducing this uh, through having very easy monetary policy. We didn't find that there was a lot of attractive uh, opportunities out there. That changed very quickly. There are specific parts of the market, not all of high yield, but where we think there are now uh, returns that are very, very attractive. And this is about 65% of your portfolio, right? That's correct. Let's talk about some of the spots where you do see opportunity. Are you looking sector by sector? Maybe start yes. there and just give us an outline we of are, what you're considering. We are um, a relative value fund. Uh, we do thorough fundamental analysis on companies that uh, we know very well. Uh, they are focused on certain industries. Um, we tend to like to own companies that have a quantifiable uh, recovery value. Uh, so we are very heavy in industrials, telecommunications, uh, service type of companies, tend not to have very much financial exposure or technology exposure. Um, and uh, again, these are companies that have issued paper uh, uh, with uh, some high coupons. A lot of this paper that we like right now was issued back 2009 uh, with very high coupons after the markets had reopened uh, post Lehman Brothers. Um, and these are companies, again, where the fundamentals are fine, the current yield is very high, and the fact that the markets happen to have backed up now presents opportunities for us. Uh, typically, two to three year duration type of names where the companies are aggressively delevering themselves, and it's very expensive paper for them to have on their balance sheet. So they want to get that off as quickly David, as possible. David, share with us, if you don't mind, some of the standouts, some of the specific companies that you've already done this research on, you've gone in depth, and you feel like, right. OK, this is a worthwhile investment for us. Um, one name I'll talk about is called Allison Transmission. Uh, Allison was a spinoff of GM back in 2007. Uh, they went private. Um, it's an 11% coupon bond that's outstanding. Uh, their, their credit metrics have remained very, very firm. Uh, again, 11% bond, where in a market that is getting crushed like it was over the summer, bonds like these go down two points, whereas other high yield paper will go down 20 points. They just filed an S1, um, which is uh, the proceeds for that IPO, presumably may be used to, to redeem this particular piece of debt. 
And in the meantime, we've owned these bonds for a while and um, are collecting a very nice yield on it while we wait for the IPO to occur. While you wait for the IPO. And you're not at all skeptical if the IPO does. I mean, I heard you say they registered, so right. all intentions if, are there. If the deal doesn't happen, um, we will collect, we'll continue to collect this coupon. Again, the fundamentals are solid. Uh, we're happy to, to sit there and clip that coupon. David, what else do you like? Um, another name similar to this, a uh, name called Casella Waste. Uh, which is a vertically integrated waste management company, mostly located in the Northeast. Again, this bond uh, uh, was issued uh, in 2009. The company has been aggressively delevering themselves. They've made asset sales. They recently issued a seven and three quarter coupon bond about four or five months ago. This paper is very expensive for them to have on their balance sheet. So. The chances of them potentially tendering for them or trying to get them out of the market early is something that, that we find attractive. Again, the, there's an asymmetric sort of risk return on bonds like these because uh, we think the fundamentals are very good and uh, we're, we're, we're collecting this high yield, uh, uh, high current yield. And again, when markets do implode, these bonds tend to be much less beta sensitive uh, and we can isolate really a fundamentally good company. Well, it's actually good to hear the, the reasoning as well and some of the research that goes behind these picks. And I know U.S. Treasuries, gold, commodities, you say in general, these are super crowded trades. Leave them alone. Yeah, well, we, we, look, we like high yield because generally it is not a crowded trade. Um, I think the flight to, um, to risk off types of assets over the summer, uh, like gold and like the Japanese yen uh, and 10-year treasuries, um, uh, have have proved to be again trades where uh, it may be safe, but there's there's really no upside. Um, and high yield is about historically right now about 200 basis points wider than historically. Uh, I think that implies about an 8 percent default rate, and we just think that that's too high. So we think the risk return is very attractive there. David, thanks so much for coming in, sharing some of your insights, some of the decisions behind the moves, the positions there. David Harris joining us, Portfolio Manager at Acuity Capital Management.